January could be a very, very bullish month for NFTs in general. And I want my community to be prepared. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a handful of steps you can take to make sure you can take advantage of a potential mini January bull run or any opportunities you find throughout 2023 in this space to their full advantage. So it is now 2023. We are in the first month of the new year. Once again, happy new year to you guys. I hope you guys had a great 2022. Let's be real. 2022 was hard for our space in general. Crypto crash, NFTs crash, volume dried up, but this is a new year. This is a new month, brand new tax season. We're seeing old players, OGs come back into the space and start talking about NFTs again. Alex Becker is probably going to start making NFT videos again. That would be really cool to see what projects he talks about. Gary V is now on his way to start relearning about the NFT space. I know he took some time away, but some of his latest tweets suggest that he wants to get a little bit more involved in the space and also wants to catch up to speed on some of the new stuff that's happening. So I think this month in particular has some people excited. Post-tax season, a bunch of different catalysts potentially upcoming like Meme Land and Ether, etc. Projects that could revitalize the space in different ways. I've also just seen a bunch of different people on Twitter just talk about a mini bull run in January for NFTs. And realistically, no one who's tweeting about this stuff really, really knows for sure whether that's going to happen. But what I will say over the past week or so, at the very end of December and leading into January, volume has been up a bit, but also a whole bunch of different projects have started to kind of just randomly pop off. So my Discord has been a part of a bunch of different degen mints that have been called in that server that have done pretty well. Different whitelist mints are doing well as well. I wouldn't say more whitelist mints are doing well, but I would say the ones that do do well are doing better than they were in mid 2022, etc. So January and end of December hasn't been a horrible section for NFTs so far. And I really want to make sure you guys are equipped to take advantage of all these things come any sort of opportunities that pass your way. So we're going to talk about those few things in this video right now. So the very first thing I want you guys to do is to get some sort of strategy in mind. Okay, so allocate a certain amount of funds that you're willing to invest into NFTs in 2023 or even in January. You can make your goals much smaller. It doesn't have to be so big picture. For instance, in January, I'm okay with investing, let's say $2,000 into NFTs. I will use this ether to mint, to flip, to buy secondary, to pay for fees, to pay for gas, etc. If I go over that 2000, that's it. I spent it. I have to sell some stuff, but I'm not going to dip into savings or my checking or my Coinbase or whatever it is. I'm going to use that allocated amount and stick to it. So having some sort of strategy really can be beneficial to you as an investor, right? You're not going to invest too much. You're not going to FOMO as much because you have limited capital. And the best part is, you know, for sure how much money you're going to spend so you can really kind of dive deep into these projects and really do more research because you know for a fact that these all of these purchases mean so much to you and your bankroll. So some sort of plan, guys, some sort of investment strategy. Figure out how much you're willing to invest this month and really sort of allocate that carefully. Number two on the list today in this video is learn to take profits. Okay, so the next couple steps after this will be to how to find profits, but you need to learn how to take them once you found them, right? It's really just as simple as a couple left clicks on your mouse or a couple taps on your phone. You just need to do it. If you're up 2x, if you're up 3x, if you're up 50%, if you're up 100%, those sort of returns don't come every day in a bear market. And so you really want to make sure that you take those profits off the table ASAP, right? And obviously this is dependent on the certain project. If it's a degen mint that's up 5X, you should probably be selling that off to take profits. Let's say you minted five, maybe you sell three and bag hold two for the moonshot. Maybe you sell four and bag hold one for the moonshot. Maybe you just sell enough to cover your initial investment. And so basically you're risking nothing and you can hold the rest for the moonshot. If you've just minted one, right? You only have one NFT, then it's more complicated. You need to figure out, do I really wanna hold this? Do I really wanna sell this? How much am I up? How much of this profit is the percent of my total I'm willing to invest in this month? That can give you an idea of what you want to do. And then obviously you want to look into the team and what they're doing and future catalysts, because we all know how fast news and media and attention moves in the NFT space. A project could be in the limelight for less than 48 hours, and then all of a sudden people don't care about it anymore. So all of those things will go into whether you're taking profits or not, and it's all project-based, but it's all subjective based on your personal financial situation. 
situation. Not everybody has the funds to diamond hand, especially if you've only allocated a small percentage of your net worth or your income to invest in these risky assets, you'll have a better idea of when to take profits and when not to. Okay, so you have an investment thesis. You know how much you're investing for this month. You also understand that you need to start taking profits. The moment you start taking profits, it gets a lot easier. You're able to snowball that effect. It gets fun, it becomes addicting, and you wanna watch your bags grow. Great, we can now move on to how to find those opportunities. So the first two are obviously going to be following certain people on Twitter, right? People like myself, Crypto Gorilla, a bunch of other people in the space who are very active sharing projects, etc., are going to be very important to follow. I will link a few that I really like in the description below, but make sure to check them out. Follow a few people. There's also a couple people on Twitter who have started doing like weekly, daily news recaps, which I plan on start doing, but I also think are really cool and can be very useful for people who don't have a lot of time to be scrolling on Twitter, to be in discords all day. Those sort of people who provide that free information are going to be a valuable asset to you as an investor. Okay, so you followed a bunch of people on Twitter. You have some good information there. Now you need to understand how to get access to certain opportunities. And this boils down to essentially being in the right discords. And a lot of discords, a lot of different projects offer whitelist raffles. They offer ETH raffles. They offer NFT raffles. They offer calls and alpha, etc. These are the type of discords you want to be in. But you don't want to be in too many. Otherwise, there's just gets overwhelming. There's too many things to check up on. So you want to find a couple discords or even one discord that you really want to be in that can give you all this stuff, help you stay up to date, ask questions, etc. So find a discord. There's obviously mine, which you can check in the description below. There will be a link there to our website. You know, we do whitelist raffles. We do ETH raffles. We do NFT raffles. We do calls, DJ mints, etc. The group's been a lot of part of that, but there's also a bunch of different discords you can join, right? There's also a bunch of different NFT projects that have discords that offer stuff like that too. But sometimes there's a bit more of like an upfront investment there and instead of like a monthly thing like mine to where you have to spend potentially like two, $3,000 to hold the NFT, which gives you access to the Discord, right? So Discords, very important. Whitelist raffles and getting access to people who are involved in the space on a more micro level with DGen Mints are some of the best ways you can find profit in the NFT space at the moment. Whitelist raffles are easy, right? You just sign up. If you win, you watch volume, you watch listings. If it's profitable, you mint, you either flip or you hold. Simple. DGen Mints are also pretty simple, right? Someone in my Discord, well, They'll share a link, maybe a contract, maybe a website. They'll post some information about it. Some people will be talking about it in chat. You can mint it. You can watch volume. You can watch listings. If it's profitable, you sell, you flip easy profit, right? Sometimes it's really just that simple. Sometimes some of these DJ mints can be a little bit scary though, right? So I would highly recommend everybody to download Pocket Universe. And I will link that in the description below. It is a Chrome browser extension. will basically tell you if a website or a contract is malicious, right? So if you mint an NFT, it'll say, okay, minus the ether you're paying and then plus the NFT you're minting. You'll know the exchange there is legit. If it's malicious, it'll tell you. It'll say, you're not getting what you want back. This is a drainer. This is just gonna take your ETH, etc." and then you can avoid that completely. But Pocket Universe is a Chrome extension. Highly recommend checking that out. It has saved multiple people in my Discord from getting hacked. It has also saved me from making dumb decisions as well. Okay, quick recap. We have an investment strategy. We know how much we are investing this month. We have that number nailed down. Two, we are taking profits. We are learning how to take profits. We are telling ourselves we are going to take profits when we're in the green. Three, we followed some people on Twitter. We found a Discord to join like mine that gives you access to whitelist raffles and alpha and degen calls, etc. Those are all going to be very important. Now we're going to go on to number four. All right, number four, guys, is going to be tools and analytics. So we've all heard about botters taking up 30% of the supply of this DJ Mint. We've all heard about, you know, NFT nerds and watching listings, the volume, etc. And all of that stuff is super important. Okay, so there's different bots out there that you can get access to that will essentially mint for you, right? You can input your wallet private key, which is safe because it's locally stored. It's not dangerous, but you obviously want to use a burner wallet. Okay, you never want to use your main account for any of this stuff. What essentially you'll do is you'll input your private key, you'll set preset gas, you'll set the parameters for the smart contract for the mint, and essentially you'll hit scan and it will mint for you. You can go to the gym, you can go to a coffee shop, whatever, and you'll come home and your NFTs will either be minted or the transaction will fail. And all this is based off of your gas presets, right? So if there's a thousand NFTs and there's 10,000 people looking to mint those a thousand NFTs, then gas is going to go through the roof and only the people who have accurate gas settings will be able to mint. And so that's where things get complicated. How much demand is there? How much supply is there? How high do I need to set gas? No one can really give you a perfect answer. I know certain botters have gotten pretty good at that. For instance, if there's a thousand NFTs and it's over allocated by 2x, depending on how hype the mint is, depending on how engagement is, depending on how the 
Discord looks. You know, you could set gas at 500, you could set priority at 500, you could set it at 1,000, and you might very well hit, right? And obviously the higher gas is, the more money you're gonna spend, and that eats into your profits. But that's where botting kind of comes into a more high liquidity play style, right? So if you're able to mint 30 to 40 NFTs and you spent 0.5 on gas, if you only minted one or two NFTs, that's not gonna be worth it. But if you minted 30 or 40 NFTs, all of that profit starts to add up and stack and stack and stack and it becomes much easier to make profits off of the gen mints that only went up 2x or even a little bit if you have a bunch of them because that obviously that profit compounds for each NFT that you minted, right? So botting, tools, getting access to stuff like that is going to be super important for you as an investor. That's just the game, guys. You can't get mad at the player, get mad at the game, right? And botting is a big part of that. A lot of people do it people in my discord do it the three main botting softwares the three main botting discords that i know of are nft thunder breeze and i think mintech those are the three my discord has partnered with breeze to give free trials so that's definitely an option there i don't know if that's renewed i have to talk to the founder but regardless those are the three that i know of at least that people really use to kind of cook these degen mints and yes it can be frustrating for the normal investor who doesn't want to spend money on a bot that's fine sometimes you're gonna hit sometimes you're gonna miss and that's also why whitelists are very much in demand still because you pretty much can avoid having to bot certain things because you have pre-sale access to begin with. And that's just the reality of the NFT space at the moment. There's going to be botters for basically any NFT or degen mint that is in high demand. They are using those software to mint a whole bunch and they're using that software to mint quickly. And that's the reality of the situation. So you can either join them and compete or sit on the sidelines and avoid it altogether. Or you can join a discord like mine or someone else's where you get access to these whitelists regardless and you can avoid botting altogether the next thing is going to be nft analytics so if you have a whitelist for something you don't want to immediately mint it without checking things you don't want to immediately mint it without checking it's safe but also checking that it's profitable or in demand to some degree i've had multiple people in my discord that have minted an nft and then it's just completely died and gone flat and sometimes that happens and it's unavoidable but for the most part if an nft isn't going to instantly sell out you have time to make sure that you're watching the listings and the volume to make sure that that you don't get stuck holding the bag. We talk about that all the time on this channel. And realistically, it really just boils down to having a little bit of patience, which can be hard in the NFT space because of how fast things move, but you wanna make sure that there's volume there so you can sell it to somebody right? They want that NFT to flip it later for more money or to collect it, whatever it is. And that's just the reality of the situation. If you mint a whitelist without checking its listings, its volume, you know, who's minting, etc., then you're putting yourself at a disadvantage to people who are using these tools to their advantage. Certain tools that you can use are like NFT Nerds, which is a paid software, but they do have a free version that just gives you slightly limited access. You can even use OpenSea's analytics tab, which gives you the listings, the graphs, the volume, etc. And you need to use those fully to your advantage so you can take advantage of these whitelists or degen mints, et cetera. And you can start making secondary plays or whitelist flips, et cetera. That's where the profit is at the moment. Everyone is using these tools. If you're not, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. You guys have four to five different ways that are going to help you guys be able to take advantage of every opportunity that comes to you throughout January. And you can use these throughout the entirety of 2023 as well. On this channel, I'll always be talking about projects I think are really cool, opportunities I think for you guys to make money, as well as sharing knowledge from my time in the space from 2017, 2016, etc. So one last thing I wanted to say, don't be that guy who blames someone else for your financial decisions. You need an investment plan. You need to know how much you're willing to invest. You need to make sure you're not FOMOing. You need to make sure you're taking profits and being actively engaged in the space. If you're not doing that, you have no one to blame but yourself. I hope you guys have a great, great start to 2023. I hope to see you guys in my Discord so you guys can take advantage of all these things that we talked about in today's video. And I will see you guys in the very, very next video. Video. Peace.